Yeah, I, I smashed my car on a kangaroo like last year. That was, Holy um, shit! Yeah, shit. yeah. It just... they're, they're worse than like deer because like, you know, they move just so erratically and sometimes they'll just sit on the side of the road, no dramas. Other times they'll just jump straight out and you just, just don't have time to, to swerve. Holy like. shit. Welcome to the One Up Podcast. I am your host, El Caballo, a.k.a. Tony. Here's what's up, my nearest and dearest and co-host in the building. I got DJ Doey Fresh in the building. I got my dog Mateo in the building. And I got my dog Pucho in the building today. Here joining us today is a special guest all the way from Australia, Stephen Beaumont from the Great Game Debate Podcast. How you doing, man? Yeah, going good, lads. I'm so stoked to be here. I've... Uh... Been a fan of yours for, I don't know, 50 some episodes. So, ready to get amongst it and get uh, a little bit saucy. Nice, I would like nice. to say, first and foremost, he's one of our best viewers slash fans. Next to maybe <laughs> Ted Lee. But, Ted like, he is, he is on point. And I, and I really appreciate you, uh, Steve. Yeah, we, Stevie we, we B. Don't be, we don't got to be comparing the quality. Yeah, yeah, we let's not compare. <laughs> We have some super <laughs> fans out there, and and and, and Steve, Steven's in the list of super fans, right? Catching all the episodes and, and all that. Listen. Tedley's in there. Tedley's wild. So he'd be showing no, love. No, no, no. It's you. a competition, bitch. Let's get those <laughs> likes up. First of all, let's get those fucking <laughs> likes up, all right? If you are re a real true fan, say it in the comment section. Throw it in there. We're in there. We're looking. We want to see We're it. We're reading. Everything comes our way. But yeah, um, Stephen, explain a little bit of, about your podcast and, you know, who's on it to our fans so that way they don't yeah, know. Yeah, huh? yeah so, um, yeah, the great game debate. We started as just a Discord, just doing um, game clubs and shit. And then um, it just developed into this idea about a podcast that started out pretty rough and uh, it's, it's still a work in progress, but... Um, Mostly Speak we to do. me quickly I, I, about the game clubs. What is this? What do you mean? Well, well, literally just like, you know, the one of the biggest ones we had was like Last of Us Part 2. When that dropped, we all played through it. We did two separate podcasts on the first half and the second half of the game. And yeah, we had like, you know, 10 or so people just chatting about it. And so it was pretty much just like a spoiler cast for people that, you know, want that outlet. So like, yeah, that's what our first idea was originally was just that outlet to spoil you know talk about spoilers and stuff in a safe environment um, that's very yeah. cool i did not know yeah. that that's interesting and when you say a game club you mean like like a book club like everybody like yeah, yeah. everybody's playing the same game together at the same time right yeah i like that exactly. concept we had, a lot we had we had one where it was just we absolutely got such good traction on twitter um mainly because of our, our uh old co-host uh wes he just had a, a massive outreach on twitter and we got about 20 people in the rotation on the day of just doing a small indie game called The Last Campfire. And that was just, yeah, it was awesome. It was just fun. That's to awesome. About. Did there he like go. or hate it? Um, I think everyone liked it. I, I know someone gave it a 10, actually. And they, most people were around the seven, seven and up level. So, yeah. You Very nice. Try not Shout to out to Wes. Trash. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, and no, I made this all happen so yeah and i wouldn't be here because i wouldn't have met crystal who then got me onto you guys so um oh, nice yeah so no it's good shit and then yeah so usually we do a debate realistically anything that the um the guest if we've got a guest on is interested in so any type of video games um we'll debate we just have lots of fun like sometimes we'll do like shotgun versus sniper or buddy which is the best like uh zelda game or horror game or whatever it is um and it can get you can devolve into stupidity very quickly, like it recently did. We just did uh, Kingdom Hearts one versus Kingdom Hearts two, and it was, it was ah. just <laughs> absolutely hilariously a nightmare, and it was great. I, and then I we just really, do... I really felt that episode. <laughs> I just wanted to be known. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Caden. We, we really felt that. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, then we do a pitch. We do a blind pitch, which is kind of like a Shark Tank. You blind pitch a game that you've been playing and see if people will buy it based on your pitch without telling them what it is. And we used to pretty much always say, Oh, it's, it's free on game pass. And that'd get like an instant sale. So now we don't say whether or not 
it's on Game Pass just to see if someone will pick it up. But yeah, it's fun to troll people with a really shit game or like, you know, actually <laughs> say a really good game. Um, and then, yeah, we usually play some games and stuff. But yeah, it's just a, a chill, tight podcast. We'll try and cut it around an hour and a half. And yeah. And how long have you guys been doing the podcast? Like, you guys started Discord, you said, and then now you moved into yeah. actual. Like, what was, how long did it take for you to do that transition? The podcast has been going for almost two years, and the Discord is almost three years. So, yeah, nice. it was about an, a year in, and the, a couple of the lads jumped on uh, a mate's podcast, uh, Jimmy Good. Um, he does critical reviews. Um, and, yeah, so they jumped on that and then got the bug, and, yeah, so here we are. It's a awesome. fantastic community too. Like the, the, there's so there's so much chatter in the, in their Discord. Yeah. It's it's amazing. That's it's always people in the in the voice chat playing something together. Like I keep meaning to be more active, but you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. We've got a whole different bunch of communities in there. It's really cool because we've got people playing D and D that may not chat like text chat, but they get all their you know their camaraderie out just playing like you know D D or freaking playing Fortnite or whatever they're they're doing and so yeah so and a bunch of people do twitch streams through our discord and stuff so yeah it's just cool now i'm assuming i'm assuming your co-hosts all live in australia with you correct or no 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 no, i'm the only aussie yeah no just i i just started chatting after one of our game clubs with Jonah, who I didn't know. I was, like, super nervous to jump in because I'm like, I don't know how many people have known each other for so long and then just decided to jump into one, give it give it a listen and stuff. I think I might have been talking about Final Fantasy VII or something like that. And um, and then, yeah, just sort of just started chatting, getting more involved in there, just, just chat. And I just... It became my second home because I just prefer it to Twitter, like, just having actual conversations with, with mates. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that's awesome, man. And I see you're a Zelda fan with the hat, right? Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Get amongst. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely. It's in my. Uh, yeah, it's it's about my my third favorite video game series, probably, easily. Damn, that's awesome. So, damn, you guys been doing it for three years. That's that's impressive, man. Yeah. So I was again another one of those COVID things, you know, 2020 or whatever, or not 2019. Yeah. Just, yeah, that's so the first thing ago. I noticed about you guys was how active your Discord was. I was like, um, mm. just seeing how many like different um, channels existed, and yeah. how many different like every single channel has like a different set of people like chatting. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, like the the level of activity in there was insane. So in my mind, I've always been like, all right, we need to like build up a Discord. We need to figure out how these guys did it and like, uh, <laughs> you know, build something similar because I I think the the community is super cool. I mean, I'm in there. I usually, I mostly stick to like the, I'm in there talking about anime or ma- or, or manga. There's usually the channels I be chatting in. But I, yeah, I think yeah. it's dope. I've been I've been making a little bit more of an effort to be more active, especially since I uh, since I've yeah. joined as as one of your other hosts now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot to say that. Yeah, Mateo, I actually stole one of the One Up members because we had such a good time with Mateo, and yeah, we've had a good um, relationship off camera um, for a fair while. So yeah, so Mateo's joined the crew. So now. There's no excuse for any one up, what what one up podcast watchers come ah. on over to GGD and check us out. Absolutely. Absolutely, yep, that is right. Um, now you did mention you said shotgun and snipers. I'm a little curious. Which one did you uh, side with there? Um, it wasn't my debate, Jonah. It was uh, Jonah versus oh, I can't remember some. Re- um, I don't remember his name. He was a reviewer. A mate, He's he was uh, yeah, made of ours. It's a re- reviewer. Um, but uh, and. Jonah was repping shotguns. I, it's hard. I rep shotguns, but I use mm. sniper rifles because I'm a bitch. Um, whoa, whoa, so whoa, whoa, whoa. That makes res- you a bitch. Res- yeah, it does. Because you're, you're, you're hiding. You're hiding. Whereas a shotgun, <laughs> what? close and personal. Close and, it's a relationship with a shotgun. Do you, 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 kill, you, kill someone, you kill someone with a shotgun, you meant it, it you felt yeah. it. It, was, it there's was an, they, like, th- there's a connection there. And the sniper that, rifle yeah. is so lifeless. It's like a yeah. sterile relationship. It's, Get it's out of here. Two. You must have never Shotgun seen Shotgun is yeah. passionate. There's fires, yeah. you know. Yeah. You're, yeah, that's you're in the that, mix. Yeah. You're in the mix of everything that's happening yeah. to use that shotgun. He's never seen yeah. my gameplay. That's why. Just to interject, that's because why. I knew he was going to say this, uh, we played a game of Battlefield right before this recording because Tony <laughs> said. I wasn't the, sniping, though. He said that Dike. Everyone says that Doey can get a better score than him on Battlefield, or something like that. Let's see. Let's see about that. 
Let's see about that. I just want to let you guys know. You're the squad leader. Of course, you're going to get more points just by clicking <laughs> fucking sectors. Right. But anyways. We don't need to rehash. The, the, the point is, Doey got a higher <laughs> score. We, we, we can rehash this at another, this another time and place. Doey, you, you got, did say that you had a list of, of questions, questions for my yeah. man. Here, right? Yeah, I got a list of questions. I wanted to know a few things because there's some stuff on the pod that we like to talk about. Uh, there was one section that's that was very popular for us called Barber Wars. And I just wanted to know if you've ever experienced this with a barber in Australia, um, because barbers in neighborhoods that we've come from are very protective of their clients. They want yeah. they you better not go sit in somebody else's chair. <laughs> God forbid you go sit in somebody else's chair. Um, stuff like that. I wanted to know what's the experience in Australia. Yeah, so I actually commented on that video because the Australian experience is so different. We only recently really popped off with barber culture, mostly like, you know, obviously you had, you had like the hipster culture that led into like, you know, all, 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 all the freaking all, all the, uh, post post freaking hardcore guys that are either baristas or have become barbers and stuff. <laughs> so like that's only been recently. So beforehand, a barber experience in Australia was like the low rent, like, Oh, go get a fight. You know, your $10 cut or whatever from this dude that is, has like glaucoma and is just hoping <laughs> to hit your head. Um, but, um, you know, and you're going to see like a rat, like run through the background or something like that. Whereas like, yeah. So in, in Australia, most small towns, like where I live in small town is it's, it's hair salons. Like I've only had ah. women cut my hair pretty much like my entire life, you know? So, so yeah. So, and I only ever would, stay with someone if they cut my hair well otherwise and i never love my hair and i don't have any anymore <laughs> but um when i did like uh, i was getting from really good like hair salons like you know different colors and shit like you know the frosted tips of the uh the late 90s and then like g g going into like i didn't get blue black but i got the um really dark dark um dark brown black because i was at a christian high school so you couldn't have like colors but you could have like natural colors. So yes. yeah, so to be get to get my real scene phase, like I went for the darkest like brown that I could and with the straight hair with the with the eye covering and all that sort of stuff. That's yeah. awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> so no barber yeah. wars. That's you guys are lucky on that then. <laughs> yeah, the the all women barbers are is are or or hair dressers, whatever. Hair dressers, you know. yeah. It's so interesting because where we, you know the the, the neighborhoods we grew up so sexist, you couldn't get your hair cut by a woman. It'd be like, oh shit, you're going to a woman to get a haircut? That shit about it's so fucked up. <laughs> there's nothing better than before getting like your hair like colored or whatever is going into the rinse and having someone with long fucking nails like Woo! massage your hair. It's <laughs> that that is like the epitome of like platonic edging. Like, fire. <laughs> fire. <laughs> Yo, I gotta completely agree with that, bro. <laughs> What's the other question? Yeah, I'm, bald, I'm bald too, but I, I'm gonna still go for it. I'm gonna just have them wash my bald. <laughs> yeah, head. you gotta. My okay, bald here's head. something people do. You need scalp. a shampoo. <laughs> you need to shampoo your bald head. Okay, there's oils and things. And you gotta you wash your head. It's not out, like yeah. you just don't got hair and you get to just f just be like, all right. You're gonna be like the people that don't wash their legs now. They're like, oh, the water will rinse it off. You know, it all it, goes it down, dude. <laughs> You gotta wash your hands. What's the other question, um, though? I have a few more. During the pandemic, um, a lot of things weren't available. I don't know how it went down in Australia, but in mm. America, a lot of things ceased and stopped, and you couldn't really go out to bars. You couldn't go out to clubs. Um, what did you find during the pandemic that you have kept with you or maybe something from the past that you used to do to have fun? Yeah, well, Discord, like, literally, like, because, and unfortunately, the sad reality is, like, yeah, drinking at home by yourself, like, or drinking <laughs> at home on a, on a Discord call, like, but yep. I, I never had great internet growing up, like, we, uh, we lived on, I guess, a hobby farm, you could call it, so we had terrible internet, um, and so I was never, I never, like, learned about online gaming until I had, like, a PS3, I think literally the first game I played with a mate while he was up in Sydney was um was the co-op post DLC of 
Far Cry 4 on PS4. Very like, it was the first time I had, like, headphones on, like, actually talking to someone. I Like, I'd played, like, RuneScape and shit before that, but yeah. So, yeah, for me, it was, yeah, literally, I was, I was so glad that Discord came along that it popped up in my feed because, yeah, otherwise... Uh, yeah, I would have just been a complete hermit. Like, yeah, because just a mate that was down the road, I just couldn't go see. And we, we both had kids at the exact same time or a month apart and then COVID hit and we just never got to see each other and we literally lost connection. That's <laughs> so, terrible. Yeah, yeah that's, that's rough. rough. Man. Um, it, so, it happens, another though. question. Another question in that same vein. See, in the US, I don't know if this is worldwide or not, but we had a wet wipe and toilet paper crisis at the beginning of COVID. Did, did the similar thing happen in Australia? Yeah. And I was working at a, um, a supermarket at the time. I was working the, I was uh, managing a liquor store. And um, like we would see it come in and like, by, like we'd just be like, cool, we'll wait till the end of our shift. There'd be nothing left by the end of the shift. We'd see a pallet come in. And it'd be gone by the end. So I was buying whatever the bougie freaking toilet paper was that was like ten dollars <laughs> for like four rolls or whatever, because it was what you could get. But like, it's funny because I'm still like, we've got we where I'm living, um, which is about a hundred kilometers from like you know the multicultural center like of Melbourne. Um, it's still quite homogenous. So it was very funny to see a lot of the the basics of like you know meat and veg go out of stock but i could go and get all the mexicans uh like stuff that i ever <laughs> wanted so it's like because my wife and i are always like yeah we'll just make whatever and when the, that's the option it's like sick we're gonna yes. make tortillas then, the you know? hispanic <laughs> aisle was full we're like yo we're just going with it at this Dude, point yeah same ex- same experience in austin honestly the uh the asian markets and the mexican food stores they still had full stock of everything, dude. We yeah. had, there was no issues. We just went to those stores. <laughs> yeah. That's and tacos and stir fry every day. So I got. I also got a question. The big thing when people say Australia, I picture everything that can fucking possibly kill you. From spiders <laughs> to kangaroos to all types of shit to snakes. Like, how often do you run into these animals or these creatures or whatever? Like, how often like do you see a fucking spider crawling across your room sometimes like is it that dangerous or is it just a fucking blown out thing he's got an entire um, room full of spiders right now he just doesn't go into those rooms yeah. anymore <laughs> no like well there's i can see a spider web hanging down so like there's a little sink <laughs> silk rope hanging down over in the corner there like like we've got white walls and stuff so we don't really have to clean them until you see like dead bugs so <laughs> it's all pretty chill like but yeah no the spiders are, are definitely the biggest one like um Luckily, we don't have as many huntsmen, which are the big fuckers. Oh yeah. Um, in, in in our house, whereas, but we've got like redbacks in the shed, which are like as deadly as like our black widows. Um, oh shit. So shit. so yeah, there are those unfortunately, and um, yeah, my one of my dogs got bitten by a snake. Um, but we've we've got more houses around us now than we did like ten years ago. So um, oh, they're it's, all it's leaving. A bit, more chi- a bit more chill now, yeah. So they they'd be pushed out, but yeah, kangaroos. Yeah, I, I smashed my car on a kangaroo like last year. That was, Holy um, shit! Yeah, shit. yeah. Just... They're, they're worse than like deer because like you know they move just so erratically. And sometimes they'll just sit on the side of the road, no dramas. Other times they'll just jump straight out, and you just just don't have time to to swerve. Holy like. shit! That's and they're buff. Even... They're buff as hell too. You ever see the uh, yeah, kangaroo yeah, flexing? Yeah, I don't think it's be fun. Yeah, lean as fuck. It it sucks because I actually had to I had to put one down because um in a in a um a ute or a tr- like a small like truck um I hit one with the back side swiped it and broke its leg so I had to fucking put it down. Oh but shit! How'd you so- put it down? I, well, that was the unfortunate thing because I was in this <laughs> like yeah utility vehicle, but it had it had a shovel and I'm like sweet, but it was a really lightweight shovel and it oh, fucking no. took me. Oh no! Oh and I. I and I, I'm a pacifist. I fucking hate... Like, I, I used to shoot guns as a kid, and I, I hate it. I don't like killing things. And so that was the fucking worst. Like, yeah. Well, like, it was I'm, better I'm, than I'm so- leaving sorry, it just to die. Like, it, like you know... You know. <laughs> you, know what's, you know what's wild is not even 40 minutes before the, we, started, uh, we started this recording, I had just finished an Australian horror movie called Sissy, and they hit a kangaroo at the beginning of that movie, and they have to finish it off. They have to back the car over the kangaroo to kill it. 
Now, are any of those either. are any of them like protect like kangaroos or whatever animals? Are they protect like protected where you can't? They are right, like you can't. Yeah, it, it, you you pretty much just have to have a license, like yeah, because we yeah because we have gun laws in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, you pretty much have to have a license to shoot them on your property as well. It's pretty much if you have a certain amount of property and it's like I, I'm shooting for pest control, cool, you can get your license and shoot whatever's on your property for pest control. But usually there is an upper limit of like, you know, I don't know how many it is, but you've got to get the license for it. But then they have to do cullings anyway, because they can just breed like freaking rabbits, you know, as well. Damn. Yeah. Okay. So there is a hunting culture there or no? Yeah. We, but most people like to do it more physically because most people like, um, that are into hunting, uh, use hunting dogs and just running and and sticking pigs and shit like that they uh, go all up north into the rainforest and stuff and they just it's all fit you know people that like have to run freaking you know four kilometers to go freaking chase down their dog that's chased down a pig like damn. yeah it's pretty wild that shit. is pretty interesting i don't know the gators up there are also like crazy too you guys got like seasons where you can hunt gators because of just how much they are growing over there right yeah yeah, I, I haven't horrible. I haven't really dealt with them in my life because again that, that's that's the north of Australia. But yeah, like yeah, the saltwater and freshwater crocs they're pretty um yeah pretty bad. I want to I want to go back to your shed for a second. Uh, um, do you feel danger when you go into that shed, or do you just go in? Uh, well, mm, I don't feel danger, but I am an arachnophobe, so <laughs> oh, <laughs> so shit. I usually like if I haven't been into the shed like for a bit, I just go in there with two like bombs and like go let them off and then like go in the next day and like but like yeah i've got gym equipment in there that just hasn't seen you since kids so <laughs> one day i want to get in there <laughs> all right for my last question since i'm a fat ass what are some popular junk foods or like popular places to eat where you grew up Ooh, that's a tricky one I guess, like, yeah, if, if you're thinking about, like, there's there's not too many Australian-centric um, fast foods. Like, we don't, just didn't have that culture. Like, pretty much everything is whatever the most popular things were from, from America. Um, so, yeah, growing up, but, like, the things you were looking forward to were, like, the smorgasbord, like, restaurants. So, like, because um, I, I think you, Pizza Hut in the States would do an all-you-can-eat, yeah? Yes. So, yeah, they had yeah. that place called... Oh, so you're place... talking about buffets. Yeah, well, buffets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, Very there was a place, nice. called, place called Smorgies that was on, on like, a pier um, out in a place called Geelong, which is on the on the beach. And, yeah, so, like, that was just, like, you go there, and as a 10-year-old, 5-year-old kid or whatever, it's just, like, you go straight to the ice cream machine, and you just freaking pour an ice cream and grab <laughs> watermelon and shit like that. You don't care about any actual food that has, like, any sort of nutrition. It's just whatever has the highest dose of fructose or sucrose, you know. Um, but, yeah, and, and then there was also uh, Sizzler, which was the same and just, you know, terrible quality oh, food. Oh, you guys you had Sizzler. The Sizzler the, was yeah. the shit. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it lasted outside of the 90s, though. I think it was yeah, the, like, the same, end of the 90s. Same. For us, yeah, it was 90s. Yeah. Yo, Sizzler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sizzler. Even as a kid, yo, they used to have the dinosaur chicken nuggets, yo. That shit. Oh, the dino the nuggets. <laughs> just the dino nuggets just hit different, right? Yes. <laughs> I gotta admit. So, all right. In a similar vein, because I'm not super familiar with what is Australian cu- cuisine like? Like, the only <laughs> thing I know is that you guys call t- ketchup tomato sauce. Yeah, which is yeah. So (laughs) it's we've got a pretty much a pastiche of like what came over to Australia during like the gold rush. So Chinese food was our biggest like um, restaurant. Like if you were in any small town in Australia, there'll be a Chinese restaurant. So that because of like a whole lot of Chinese immigrants came over during the gold rush, Um, and then also we've got a lot of the, the UK influence. So like meat pies and shit like that. So yeah, so like a, a meat pie or a chico roll, but then also like going to have, uh, and then also like what you call like dim sum in like the states. Like we have all individual names, like and like that you can get stuff at like convenience stores just called dim sims, which are actually like just this pouch of like um, meat and veg that you either put, you can either steam them or you can fry them, and you and we put soy sauce with them and like. They they go off. Um, Fire. Yeah. So like, 
And then, like, yeah, like, the Chico roll is, you know, obviously a spring roll is, but yes. um, it's a bigger version of that. You cover it in chicken salt, and it's, like, full of just gross chicken gravy meat, but it just it, it hits yes. so well. Like, when, when you're, like, seedy and hungover, it just hits really, really well. Yeah, Otherwise, that, that... it's just... Yeah, you know, going to KFC and getting a zinger box after you've yeah you know, had a night on the oh. channel to go. <laughs> yeah, we used to uh, we had this place here in Austin called Boomerangs, and they made just hand pies. And holy yeah. shit, they were the best thing in the world to drink while you to eat while you were drinking beers. They were just yeah. so yeah. perfect and yeah, meat, yeah, filling. Me, yeah, meat, meat pie and a beer is like yeah, top shelf. Yeah, very nice. So you said something interesting there I've never heard of. All right, I don't know if you guys caught it, but chicken salt. So I, people call me a chicken killer, okay? I chicken love salts. me some fried chicken. I've never I, heard of no chicken salt. That's that's the other thing that I, I did share with Mateo a while back um, through a crystal tweet or something. But, like, she said she was having fish and chips, and I was like, do you guys have potato cakes over there? And so, like, that's, like, it's, like, a a thin layer of, like, scalloped potato that's, you know, been mashed up and, and reconstituted, but then it's then it's battered. So you've got this disc, a, a golden potato disc and um that's fucking absolutely awesome but yeah chicken salt is literally it's just like uh, some sort of you know salt with flavorings like you know you you'd have on Seasoning. you know ch- chicken flavored ramen yeah like so it's like it's almost like that mixed with salt almost like and it's just <laughs> it's awesome you put it on everything Fire. all right i need to check this out Fire. That, sound, that sounds and whatever the salt. fuck this potato yeah. disc is yeah, no, that's just, I imagine or, it. Imagine it looking like a McDonald's hash brown, but just tasting yeah. better. Or, so. Yeah, or deep fried potato scallops is what like <laughs> Northerners call it. Yeah. Damn. Oh yeah. Awesome. 